Hey, I don't, I'm not sure if everyone knows who you guys are. Why don't you, why don't you guys start with introductions? Because everyone knows us. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah, My name is uh, Ming Chen. I'm on a TV show called uh, Comic Book Man that airs on AMC with Kevin Smith and the guy next to me. Uh, we also do a bunch of podcasts, uh, one called I Sell Comics, one called The Ming and Mike Show. And uh, we just opened up a podcast studio right down the street from the store called A Shared Universe. So uh, we, and we're just geeks. So we're fellow geeks here. Is, is there a certain website people can go to? Uh, yeah, asharedUniverse.com if you want to come and podcast with us and geek out. We can talk, you know, we can continue the discussion about Marvel or DC or whatever you want to talk about on a podcast. Anybody can come down. Great. Nice. And I'm Mike Zapsig, and he just took everything I was going to say. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, we, we do um, yeah, a couple of podcasts. Um, we love nerd culture. You know, I, I actually just did a TED Talk about... Um, it was the the theme was based on passion, and mine was passion for pop culture. And I talked about this. I was talking about you know why we are in the age we're in, where nerd culture, geeks, um, everything we love is you know up on the big screen and even on the small screen. And why we have gotten so much acceptance? It's because remember those really crappy. Um, made-for-TV movies that they had in the 70s, Captain America, played by Red Brown. Red Brown, you, you all remember them, right? They laid the foundation for the really good Captain America. We were just waiting for Chris Evans to be born. That's pretty much what it was. My like, own. all right, now hold on. Uh, Let's yeah, put a Red Brown in there, because Chris Evans was born a year and a half ago, so we're good. <laughs> I think my favorite was, uh, was a trial of the Incredible Hulk. Was that Hulk and Thor? No, no, that was that was Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil, yeah. Yes, the, no, that was, the Thor was death up, but the trial was great because it was it had Kingpin, uh, John Rhys Davies, who played Sala in Raiders <laughs> and all the other. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And the uh, his escape scene, I mean, even a real blind guy could have caught him. <laughs> when his his hovercraft was lifting off, and it moved in such slow motion. Yes. Thor was in the return of the Incredible Hulk, then it was the trial of the Incredible Hulk, and the Black Widow style was in the death of the Incredible Hulk. Thank God, because it wouldn't be a panel here if a nerd didn't give us a true thing. So, awesome. We did it. Thanks, guys. See ya. Yeah, exactly. We, we appreciate that, Doc, from the love boat. So. Wrong. I can't wait for when we're talking about like something that happened in, in Infinity War, and someone's like, but well, actually, excuse what, me. What happened was yes. Yeah, I'm we're sorry. We're not going to say things that are perfect. I'm sorry. Kevin Feige came out and said that that was not uh, contextually correct. So yes, I mean Dude, I am making I love, fun of each and every that. one of you and myself mostly because that's what I sound like too. Yeah. Uh, so moving down this side, my name is Mike. This is Warren. We have uh, Uncanny Nerd, UncannyNerd.com. So let's talk. Let, let, let's talk these Marvel movies. Yeah. Let's talk yeah, these yeah, Marvel movies. Yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, I want to. I want to start off. Kids, come on. I want. I want to like, start off. I like with that we started way early too, like the old, the, the old. Yeah, TV the Marvel movies. Stuff, yeah, yeah, we're starting with the. Uh, Remember the Generation X TV show? Oh dear God, yes. <laughs> that was uh, the girl from General Hospital. I forget Fiona. Not Web, Fiona, Apple, Fiona. Not Fiona. Come on, Apple. you. Yeah. Fiona. <laughs> really? You're, you're like, all right, you already embarrassed me once. You're not going to do it again. I'm not talking. So, um, yeah. But yeah, that, so moving on, you know, yeah, just like you said, there's been so many things, but they finally ended up getting it right. They got the formula right. They're making entertaining and awesome movies, which have changed the entire movie landscape. Yeah. And Infinity War drops. Holy crap. Yeah. I want to talk about Infinity War just for a couple of minutes here. Can, can we just go back one more? It one changed the that. Well, no, just <laughs> one step where you said that it changed the entire landscape, and you're absolutely right. So much so that um, Steven Spielberg and James Cameron are like complaining about superhero <laughs> movies. And these are two guys who should I, complain about nothing. Titans. Jackasses it is what, in my opinion, <laughs> yeah. they've made some fine feature-length films, but you know what? I think it's just because they weren't asked to direct, and that's <laughs> now that that's changed, and uh, we haven't heard Spielberg talk about superhero fatigue because he's going to be directing the Blackhawks movie. Yes. So it's like, 
Oh, good. Just give him something to shut him up. <laughs> yeah. And James Cameron, you know what? I would love to give him nothing. <laughs> nothing. Not one. That man gets not one dollar more of my money. Well, he has like forty-seven avatars list, um, in the lineup. Good for him, and I, I hope I never see one of them because I didn't see the first one, and I never will. <laughs> well, Mike Zapsic boycott. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hashtag Mike Zapsic boycotts James Cameron. James Cameron's like, oh. <laughs> Does, does that make you happy to see Spielberg eat crow like this bad? Like that big plate of crow? Like does it make me happy? It, well, it, it should be a big plate of Blackhawk is what he should yeah, be eating. Yeah, big plate of Blackhawk. Because here's a guy who made his... He is, or should have been, one of the people who was the at the forefront of pushing superhero movies, you know, because he stole so extensively from everything to make his movies. And if you ever want to have a laugh, go back and I'm sure it's on YouTube and I know it's on, um, there's a thing kids called DVDs, okay? Digital video discs um, of Night Gallery. He, one of his first attempts at directing anything was an episode of Night Gallery. And you can tell that this guy used to read EC comic books. Mm. And you're like, wow. So anybody who complains about where they really came from, you know, um, slap him. Slap him hard. <laughs> and that's how you start a movement, right? I guess. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Slapping people. Yeah. Hashtag slap Steven Spielberg. We got a lot of hashtags coming out of this panel, yeah. though. It's like, oh my God, All-Star Comic Con was great, except for those panels. They were great because there were so many hashtags. Please, has, has please don't slap DVD. Steven Spielberg. Yeah, do you want to strike <laughs> Steven Spielberg? No, I want someone else to do it for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. This way, I, no, no litigation on my part. You, you know, just have that little card, you know, the marijuana card. You're like, yeah, I've got depression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my doctor said slap Steven Spielberg. If only. If only. So, Infinity, Infinity War. War. Infinity let's, War. Let's start Jeez. with the last big one. Um, yes. Did everybody see it? Has everyone, too, if you haven't, too late. It totally scarred me. I hate all of you. Well, we didn't make this I movie. Know, I I'm saying Marvel. Are we, are we the Russo brothers all? Wait a minute, why did I scar you? Why did I, how did I personally scar you? I feel like Chris Hardwick sitting up here. Oh my God. Oh. 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 It is never too soon, folks. That's true. Hashtag That's never too soon. Pulling out the Hardwick. <laughs> oh, hey, man. look, you know what? It, it, We're we less than 24 hours, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think that there is a solid, there's a brotherhood? You know, we tried, we tried to get uh, a couple of guys from The Walking Dead to come on Comic Book Men, yeah. and no traction. So, yeah, there's your brotherhood. <laughs> you know, hey, do you want to be on Comic Book Men? Jeffrey Dean Morgan's like, what? And, yeah. So, okay. I'm thank surprised you. there's not a, a talking comic book man like right afterwards. That shows you our popularity. <laughs> and to, to be honest, if they did, I, we would be more closely tied to Chris Hardwick and I'd be scrambling on Twitter right now. I'd be like, I can't do the panel. I gotta, oh my God. Uh, we are, no, 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 no. It's like, oh shit. So, oh, dookie, sorry. Um, <laughs> would, uh, would you do it? Say um, they, need a, they need a replacement now. Would you do it? Uh, would I do it yeah, in a heartbeat? It? But it's sort of like somebody coming up to you with a Lamborghini that's been hosed down with poop <laughs> and saying, here are the keys, kid. Yeah. And it's like, well, okay. It's still a Lamborghini. It's a Lamborghini. But it's a Lamborghini, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you can go to a car wash, right? Yeah. Poop, poop no, comes off, so... But it's not I like know. poop on the Lamborghini. It's like, um, you know, like Biff Tannen, like from Back to the Future? It's in. It's, it's, poop it's, in? Up, it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. in the cracks of the sea. You gotta, well, burn. <laughs> you gotta burn that. Yeah, you can go to... <laughs> don't they do detailing? Isn't that... I mean, they, I think we've devolved a little bit, but I would do it anyway because I would make Talking Dead my own. But so it's like... And, and I would get like... And Kevin Smith said, and then everybody would be watching. It's like, oh, cool. Let's see what Kevin Smith said. How about Kevin? Kevin would be fantastic. He would. Yeah. Let's do Kevin. Would. Definitely. Why not? Then, Why, hey, wait a minute. You're taking this away from me. Hold on. <laughs> I didn't say no. You already got fired. You just lost the job. I just, oh, man. You're, you're like costing you. You're walking home. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a lot like Infinity War. And it is. So, <laughs> so yeah, let's let's get down to the the meat and potatoes of Infinity War. Everything yeah. was building up to this. 
every brick in the Marvel Foundation was leading up to this pyramid. So you had Captain America, the first Avenger. You had actually Iron Man first, yeah, Iron Man. but then you had Captain America, the first Avenger, and you throw all the other ones in there, even the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, yep. they, Hulk is there, Thor. It's it, It's been amazing how they can just build it. And I think that's why Infinity War was such an impact on the viewers, because if you spend one movie with a buildup and then throw in the demolition, yeah, it hits. But if you spend 10 years with the yeah, buildup right. and throw it at you, you're yeah. like, holy crap, they tied everything together? Yeah, this is with something that had never been <laughs> yeah. done before on, on the no. big screen. No, it had been done before in comic books. And, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the 19, like 1975 to 1985 of Marvel Comics because everything meant something somewhere. You know, we found out that... Um, the, that Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch were the, you know, the twin son and daughter of Magneto. Yeah. But they didn't tell you in the Avengers. They just gave you that lead up. You had to find out by reading Uncanny X-Men. Because there was that one snippet that John Byrne did. And he was like, hey, here, here's me. Magneto's up in space. And he's like, oh, my wife Magda, how it hurt when you left me. I didn't know you were pregnant. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, boom. You're like, you get to play detective and you get to that's what i loved about the marvel movies they put those blocks in there for you to yep. find and you can say oh my god i remember that from captain america winter soldier yeah you know it's and they don't smack you across the face like you would steven spielberg so it's <laughs> it's for you to find out you know one of the things that I, that i saw that was interesting it's about you know because they can't have a hulk movie of his own because of licensing issues but if you go through and, and something I think uh, Feige said himself was that if you go through and take like all the Hulk scenes and it's an example of like getting all that information on your own, you can almost like make your own Hulk movie with just his scenes and that storyline that they've been building through the franchise for a decade. That's excellent yeah. and lazy storytelling. <laughs> <at its best. laughs> yeah. So it's perfect. So it's like we're going to make a Hulk movie, but you have to put it together. You have to, <laughs> so, yeah. It's like a build-a-figure when you go out and buy a Marvel Legend. I'm so, sure yeah. a super cut. Some yeah. assembly yeah. required. Yeah. Yeah. You can never find the one piece you need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny part uh, for Infinity War, you know, we filmed, um, after Black Panther came out, we had a reaction video. So we were at, the, yeah. we were at a pre-release with a lot of the guys here, actually. And getting people's reactions as they walked out of the theater. People were hyped. Like, oh man, that's the best Marvel movie I've seen. Or, oh man, I haven't seen something mm -hmm. like this in forever. I'm so excited to see this, this, this. We did that for Infinity War. Yeah. I couldn't uh, use a damn thing. It was people, everyone, yeah, walked, everyone walked out of the theater like, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that. Uh, I think I enjoyed that. I, I'm going to go cry. Yeah, seriously. Every, all, every yeah. single person. We had literally one person that gave any kind of emotion in the reaction because they were all, their, their souls were crushed. They're every single thing. person. Because someone in here went back in time and was at that uh, release. Uh, are you Steven Spielberg? Are you Steven Spielberg? <laughs> and they're walking out going, I don't know what I just saw. And I, and I don't know why that person slapped me, but I hope You're someone's out there with a camera. <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> and and now, now Spielberg's, uh, it's his fault for all, everything bad in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> well, let's give it to James Cameron, because I like Spielberg. Okay. Yeah, James oh, Cameron. Oh, do, do you like Spielberg? <laughs> I do. I want you to slap Spielberg, but I like him. I, I just want him to learn a lesson. That's all. It's, um, it, this is a teaching moment for us, folks. Why you gotta be so violent, dude? <laughs> Can't you just like give I, us a third talk I to? I grew up on video games. I don't know. I'm, I'm oh, not really sure. Oh, there it is. That's yeah. playing video games and Steven Spielberg movies. It is a Spielberg movie. Yeah. Okay, so what happens? What's next? What's what's after Infinity War? I don't know because I think. I'm sorry. What? Ant Man and Wasp. Man and Wasp. Well, yeah, that's yeah. still technically that's Phase that's three. three. Yeah, we're still in Phase three, so. Uh, and then we got Captain Marvel. Spider-Man Spider Homecoming. Homecoming. That is supposed to be the very first of the Phase 4 movies. Yeah. So whatever the fallout, the very last film in Marvel Phase 3 is, is going to be Avengers 4, which yes. I don't know if anybody has any speculation. I think we're going to lose some of the original Avengers. So... Oh, Iron Man! <laughs> Iron Man! <laughs> yeah, Robert Downey Jr. Hope smacked he dies. Him too. Yeah. yeah, hope he gets smacked to death. <laughs> Great work, detective. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, no, I'm just saying that uh, either, well, Iron Man and Cap. In my opinion, I think that the bookends of if they're going to do this right, and probably will, 
they're gonna like kill off those two characters. And this is just speculation. Um, yes, you have a question. I just got a question. I think that, for instance, I think it's all going to come back to that conversation they had in Civil War. I mean, not Civil War, but the first Avengers when Captain Murphy told Iron Man, you're not the kind of guy who lay down the wire. Right, yeah, you're not, you're not the one who's, who's going to make the sacrifice play. But Captain America is. He is that guy. Right, I think they're going to flip it, and then mm. Iron Man actually makes it. I think you're right, but I think they're going to give you a one-two punch because you know the Cap is that guy. And he might go, you know, let's say Iron Man gets killed by Thanos and then Captain America goes after him and dies you know, a heroic death, maybe, you know, jumping on a grenade. Or just get slapped like an Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get slapped with an Infinity Gauntlet. Whatever you do, when you're slapping Steven Spielberg, do not hit him with an Infinity Gauntlet. Pinky. Okay, so I know, that, I know that in the comics how um, how there's always Bucky who becomes Captain America, yes. and then there's also Sam Wilson who becomes Captain America. So something that I found kind of strange in Infinity War is that like Captain America's successors, like they both, you know, go away. So if they do end up falling through with it, don't you think they? Well, obviously Cap's gonna come back. Like I feel like that's a no-brainer in Avengers Four. But um, if they do end up like killing off Cap, like, do you think maybe they'd put one of those two in position? Because... Why not both? There's... Why wouldn't you do both? I mean, his, uh, he's got a shield that Tony's got. Yeah. And you've got the Wakandan shields, which are really cool, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So, I would, and I think that you give the, the original shield to Bucky, and then you give the other ones to the Falcon, so he's got, like, talons. Right? Yeah. yeah, there you go. Then Bucky. No, U.S. agent. The U.S. agent's a guy. Yeah, he's a guy. Let, let's not talk about him. All right? <laughs> yeah. That is, that is the finest 90s comics writing example right there. Is U.S. agent. <laughs> Which is not saying a darn thing. Um, uh, Mark Grunewald's heart was in the right place. And I think he was used to good effect uh, in West, uh, Avengers West Coast when John Byrne took it over. Um, but that's the comics, not... Not the movies. We're talking about the movies yeah. here. Are you sure? Something I think... Uh, didn't Enemy of the State have a lot of rollerblades in it? <laughs> there were, but the 70s had rollerblades in it, yeah, too. Yeah, rollerblades so. were huge back then. Yeah, roller yeah. skates. Actually, Iron Man had roller skates in his he armor. Yep. He did. Rocket-powered like rockets, roller skates. Yeah, rockets in the back. Yeah, no, I, you don't believe me? Avengers, Avengers Annual Number 9. Go pick it up. I think you can get it for three bucks out there someplace. Yeah, I saw a guy out there with it. Yeah. Uh, it might be me. Yeah, the three group. bucks. <laughs> yeah, I need third, that three bucks. Third really guy, Third guy's got a copy. Yeah. If you, uh, if you hurry, do you, you have a follow up? Yeah. Okay. So uh, another follow up to that is, what about uh, Agent Carter? Like, you know, what's gonna happen with Peggy? Because supposedly she's also like a successor to Captain America. So. Um. You mean, again, in the comics? Yeah, in the comics. Obviously. But that's Exiles, yeah. Yeah. and that just happened about a month ago. So I don't think Kevin Feige got that issue. But I, you kidding? I think that that uh, Agent Carter is a, was a fantastic television show, and they should have dropped. If ABC didn't want to do it anymore, they should have taken it over to Netflix. Yep. Um, and it, it might happen still because I mean she's a fantastic character. I've always liked Peggy more than I like Sharon, yeah. but that's just me. You know, one of the things for uh, Infinity or in Infinity War Two, I would love to see. I mean, one of the favorite parts is when you see the guys doing stuff together. Like you have yeah. um, Iron Man doing a blast and Cap redirecting it off oh, the shield the to hit somebody. The yeah. team up. Up. Yeah. And then you know the whole team fractured, and they yeah. haven't really done a lot of that. If if the win comes by something like that, like. Cap picks up Stormbreaker to hit the arc reactor, and that causes something. You know yeah. what I mean? I would love if they if they wrapped it all into that tri the trilogy of them to do something magical. My favorite one of those yeah. almost uh, Neil Adams esque pictures that they you know it's like right up on the screen. You're like screen cap, you know, um, was in Age of Ultron where you had Iron Man, Thor, and the Vision, and they're all focusing their their power beams on Ultron. Yep. And I was like, oh, that is... If Neil Adams didn't draw that, he should have. So, 
You can ask him to draw. They'll charge you nine hundred dollars for I'm, it. <laughs> okay, and I'll have Spielberg pay for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like have people stop slapping me. I think the quantum realm is going to play a huge part in Avengers 4 and their defeat of Thanos. I think that's just, it's a, kind of a no-brainer. And the fact that Captain Marvel was the last call that Fury made was, uh, I'm, I'm thinking either it was a booty call or... <laughs> what? Well, he's got no booty left, though. <laughs> when, well, booty well, like, when, yeah, when, when he didn't know he had no booty left, so he's like, oh, all right, knew. everybody's, you know, the helicopter just crashed in there, it's like... World's yeah, about to end, I want to get some. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. or, and I think that um, the Cree are going to play a huge part in this as well. Yeah. So, I mean, it's entirely possible that Cap, not entirely possible, it's entirely probable that Captain Marvel and where she's been for the past uh, 90, 27 years <laughs> is Good going math, to, uh, thank you, is going to uh, play a huge part in her rallying the other species and, and making uh, an army to fight Thanos. And, you know, the, um, what, what do they call them? Black, not Black Sunday. They're the, Black Order. Uh, Black Order. Yeah. For some reason, I had Black Sunday on there. But um, I just want to say, I guess, because we're sitting with the Ant Man Hospital, it's sort of like connected to uh, Captain Marvel because of uh, Captain Marvel. What does that mean? She might have an appearance in the live part of the movie Ant Man Hospital. I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think there. she will. Mainly, I think there might be like an end credit scene where they well, lead right into it. Well, yeah, most of Ant-Man and Wasp, I think, takes place before Infinity War. Yeah, yeah maybe an after credits. Yeah. So to I keep mean, keep teasing that this thing is coming, that's going to save the day, maybe. And that thing might be Janet Pym. We don't know, or Janet Van Dyne. We're not sure. Yeah. She spent quite a bit of time in the quantum realm, and you know, time's sub subjective there, so. So we've seen some uh, early shots of Infinity War 2, where they look like they're in the past. They're doing some time traveling, apparently. Is that Quantum Realm? Is that how you think they're going to handle this? Flashback? Quite possible, yeah. Quantum Realm? I doubt it's flashbacks. I think they're going to actually time skip. Because, I mean, what's a, a cosmic comic crossover without some, some time skipping? Good old-fashioned yeah. time skipping? Yeah. yeah. Cool. If it was Spielberg, it would be flashbacks. <laughs> and uh, hence why he should be slapped. <laughs> tell, so. them, tell them the Wolf Lang and alternate better ending to Infinity War. Uh, you which know, the pager instead of Captain Marvel. Oh, you wanted a pager? Oh, no, well. no, 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 Captain you know, Oh Captain my Man. god, yeah. yes. Throw this out there for you, folks. Yeah, yeah check this out. Post, okay. You're going to love this. Post uh, credit scenes. Nick Fury's making his phone call, and um, he said, oh, mother, and then uh, you look at the pager, and there's a big four on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. How cool would that have been? Yeah. Yep. So, uh... Yeah, <laughs> so it's actually, four, four. fifth time's a charm, buddy. The fifth. So Comcast put a bit in. Uh, yeah, of course they did. Well, um, they have to, it's a shell game. They have yeah. to make it look good. So, so what we're know. talking about is uh, Fox. You know, Disney put a, an all-cash offer in of 55... Fi oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Disney, Disney did a stock bid of 50-something billion dollars. <laughs> Comcast came back and said, hey, no, we want to buy Fox and their properties for 60-something billion in cash. You know what? If they get Fox, Disney stock is going to be worth more than seventy billion dollars in a, like a year. Yeah, so I think I, I take that and just make make a make a full Marvel universe, man. How amazing would that finally be if that ever happened? Let's put it this way: everyone seated in this room, we're all lifelong comic book geeks, correct? Yeah. yeah? All right. 
Especially you, young man. Yeah, the the eight year old sitting back there. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> His entire life. You're the one, man. Um, <laughs> you're you're our final hope. <laughs> but okay. So if that, let's say that this goes through and everything merges, and we now have the entire Marvel catalog under one roof, you will people will be popping out of the woodwork to see a really good Fantastic Four movie which can be done and should be done. The closer you stay to the source material, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, we know it was the Incredibles. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank Commodore. You. Thank you, Kevin Captain Smith. Obvious. Yeah, Commodore Kevin Smith told us. Um, <laughs> but um, then you'll see people being like, I was always a comic book fan. You're like, you were never at the <laughs> meetings. Never saw you. At, I never saw you at All-Star Con. You didn't correct me on any facts. Exactly. Seriously. <laughs> Excuse me, young man. You were never a full-time comic book fan. So, yeah. And so, but now, now that we're, we're talking about what's, what comes next? Phase what's, four. What is phase four? Yeah. Right. So, um, gentlemen, That's we know four. a couple of things. Yeah, run down the list. Yeah. We the, know proposed, that, the, the proposed list or the... Uh, we know that Spider-Man's coming back. Yes. Yes. There is a sequel to Spider-Man Homecoming yes. because it made all the money. Boo? Who said boo? You don't like Spider-Man? I like Miles Morales. Okay, he's cool too. Yeah, I'm hoping to see Miles Morales. Just because there's, like I said, you know, let's make Bucky and Falcon uh, Captain each Captain America. Let's make two Spider-Man. Why not? Make it a franchise. Spider-Man. Like a Dairy Queen. <laughs> You might, you're still going to get it, no matter what, even if it's, no, you will get it in, in our lifetime. That's a guarantee. So, oh, you don't have to boo Peter Parker. <laughs> Dude's, you know, he's, he's paid some dues as well. So, and we had five terrible, well, oh, 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 the first one all right, well, we had four terrible, one, one serviceable, but it was Tobey Maguire. He cried like Steven Spielberg getting slapped. I swear. I'm sorry, who? Adam Garfield. Who was? Andrew Garfield. Thor was a great Spider-Man. Sure. If, if. That's why they make butter pecan ice cream, too. So, not just chocolate or vanilla. He was a so, yeah, I, I did not like uh, Andrew Garfield because he was too much of a hipster douche. Pardon my French kids, but he, he was. That's what he was. And Pretty it was boy. just so... Floppiest of hair. Yes, fingernails. I mean, I, and believe me, you're talking to a guy who takes care of his hair, no matter what color it is. Look at it. All right? I mean, this, this hair in the past five years has been like 27 different colors. So, but he was, he was so like flip as Peter Parker. Peter Parker was supposed to be that nerd. Not, you know, he didn't come into his own as soon as he got his spider powers. It was, it was was both actually. So yeah, I mean, (laughs) either or it's, it still comes up with a guy who, who was a hipster. I mean, it's like they took the, um, the script for Spider-Man three and gave it to him and said, pretend it's Spider-Man 4. And that's what he did. And he was just, you know. Well, first they wiped down that Lamborghini with it. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> well, yes. And then they yes. put it out there. <laughs> the, the poopy. I'm sorry? Yeah, and, and who cares about Campbell Scott anymore? I mean, you know, he had his chance. Yes, I know. <laughs> who was Campbell Scott? And I love Ann Beth Davids. And, you know, she was in there for like seven seconds saying, Goodbye, Peter. We love you. We're going to go die now. So. Relatable. Like, the thing I liked about Tom Holland's Spider Man was that, like, personally, as someone who's in high school, he's someone that's really, like, you can relate to him. And he actually looks like he's 16. Like, Tommy McGuire. And, like, he looked like he was my age. He, looked, he, had, you know, he had the gray hair. Yeah. He looked like he was a 16 year old boy who was struggling to get by. Like, come on, no one wants that. That's that's exactly it. And he sounds like he's from New York for for once. Who, Tom Holland? Yeah. 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 No, he he I know he's, he's from London. He's from Hello, everyone. How are you? Why I'm Spider Man. Why are <laughs> Spider Man in like animated whatever always 
least sound like they're from like Iowa or something. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Non regional dick. I am not Kevin Feige, so I can't. Or Jeff Loeb. And again, an, another man that deserves to be slapped. So <laughs> slap Jeff Loeb. Hashtag. Like Jeff Just Loeb. make him a list. He's in charge of Marvel TV, right. so like and they are so well. They're so fractured. Marvel TV is so fractured, and they should be very cohesive. That that yeah. just yeah. bums me out. Hey, so can we run? Can we run through the list of? Yeah, uh, let's go through the list. Oh, yeah, yeah. Marvel Phase Four. So, I know. Um, so so we've got. Well, someone booed Peter Parker. I, I, so you, you have to. I, I, I couldn't it's let that stand for God's sake. So Homecoming yeah. Two. Yeah. So we please we've got, don't please don't boo anymore because then we'll be here until about. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I just can't let that stand. Yeah, home, Homecoming Two. Sorry. Uh, uh, well, actually, that might, that's not going to be the name. Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, Spider Man. Spider Man. Um, which is supposed to happen. Spider-Man right. prom night. Let's call it that. Prom prom night. Night. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I'm gonna not make a joke about that. But uh, you have so that comes right after uh, uh, Infinity War yes. uh, two. It's they even said it's directly mm-hmm. after it, like a, a week or something like that. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy three. Three. Okay. Um, what? Adam Warlock Adam. is a is a lock. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mighty big He's a shoe in. How about that's that? That's a really big shoe. That's a big uh, shoe. Black Panther two. Black yes. Panther two. They did. They they stayed at Black Panther two. But there is also, I mean, because Black Panther one made all the money in the world. Yeah. Uh, that was left over um, from Infinity War. Black Widow. Black no, Widow no, is definite. <laughs> so we we've, we've got these things, and they're the thing that breaks my heart. Um, then not really. But it, it, it does, it kills me because they, they went ahead with the Inhumans TV show when they were planning on a movie and it just sucked yeah. so badly. Yeah. You would have? You would have gone and seen it? Even if Miles Morales wasn't in it? Yeah. Right. You're a true fan. I like you. You could but have seen it in the theaters. Didn't they release they it? They did. No, he did. You yeah. saw oh, it in the theaters. Yeah. You, you saw it in you IMAX. Went. Yeah, they did the premiere. They did the premiere. You went to you the went. premiere. Oh, wow. You're, uh, again, a true fan. I cried. And that's you cried. That's how bad it was. It's not like you're walking out of Infinity where you're just like I spent twelve dollars on IMAX tickets. Oh, you had to pay for it. Oh, okay. Well, we're talking about Marvel. Wood. Green Lantern is going to be a whole different. Um, that's an hour. Yeah, that's a, that's a second. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll do that in another breakout so you, room. You mentioned uh, Adam Warlock, right? So then yes. in Phase 4, a big part of that is uh, that I think that transition into the cosmic series. They're going to do some cosmic stuff. There's some yeah. speculation that Nova, the Nova Core, I would love to see Rich Rider. Yeah. Um, maybe Tom Holland has some friends that he wants to bring in. and One of them can be, hello, I'm Rich Rider from the Bronx. You know, it will be great. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he's got friends. So another way... Uh, uh, Guy who owns a comic store locally, actually, we were talking about this, and one of the things he suggested, we thought it would be awesome to see, is if they brought like an MCU version of uh, the Champions. We're looking at like a younger generation of heroes here. So you have your Miles, you bring in a Miss Marvel, you have uh, a new version of the Hulk. Since a lot of the older guys, like you said, Cap's going to be going away, right. but Iron Man's going to be going away, theoretically. So having this like whole younger new team up going on, and I think that would be a really good draw for people as well, to, to just have something else going on in the universe. We could have, actually, not even just the champion. You bring Shuri in. You bring yeah. regular Spidey with yeah. Tom Holland. Let them do their little shit right. thing. But they, they could also do a couple of other things because uh, we we see uh, Scott Lang's daughter, and she's mysterious. She's pulled a, uh, a family ties, and she's now gone from baby to, like, 16 years old. <laughs> so she's... Um, <laughs> Everyone's like, "What the hell's a family, family time? time? <laughs> what the hell are you talking it. about?" Yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, there are there are enough elderly people in here who know what I'm talking about. Um, What's a permanent? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so um, you can have Cassie Lang as stature. You can bring in the young Avengers. Exactly. So, and I mean, the Vision is dead. Why not reboot him as you know? As whose daughter? Oh, Vision does have a daughter, but in the Young Avengers, they also used his disassembled body to make a younger Vision. So it was very cool. 
and it was uh, programmed with like the brain waves of I think it was um, the guy who would become Kang, Nate Richards. Yeah. So. So they mentioned that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy three is going to be uh, a really important movie for Phase four, obviously, and that uh, part of it's going to focus on Rocket's origin story as well. Or at least that's what I read. Again, yeah. uh, in the comics, he was um, like experimented on by the Kree. Yep, so, exactly. And which, again, this is why it's like a wasted opportunity that they they jumped the gun with the Inhumans, and they could have, you know, here are the Inhumans, the ambassadors of the Kree on Earth, and they just that was it. Yeah, that's it. So, and you made that guy cry. Right there. <laughs> so. so that would be the thing that you really would rather have seen or you'd want to see. I would have loved to have seen that. And um, what Marvel was trying to do, Marvel Comics was trying to um, jockey the Inhumans because they're like, why are we, they, they canceled the Fantastic Four because, well, we don't own the rights to the movie, so screw it. And then they're yep. like, the X-Men, well, we don't own the rights, so let's not give them as much you know, publicity. publicity. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we just take the Inhumans and make them the premier group next to the Avengers? And they tried to do that with many comic books. They, they literally had mm -hmm. an Inhumans versus X-Men series where yes. they, the entire Marvel Universe basically takes the side of the Inhumans against the X-Men. Right. Uh, in a very stupid way, actually. Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was very... Like, literally, mutants around the world were getting killed and they're like, well, it's okay. The Inhumans are fine. It's, it doesn't yeah. matter. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let, let, let them have their heritage and their traditions. Exactly. And it, was, it, was, it was horrible. It, it Semi-racist is what it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was showing, uh, in like a purest forms, Marvel's idea of how they want to just get rid of the X-Men. They actually wrote it down. Yeah. And they, yeah. Yeah, this is how, you know, uh, turns out that the... The ter uh, terigenesis, terigen um, yeah, ter ter terigenesis. That's um, that's the function that comes. See, I'm I'm looking at you because you know this. But uh, they had terigen mist going on, you know, and it was killing mutants. So they were going to write off the X Men, which may not have been a bad idea. Now that they can, I mean, they've been the butchering them for years anyway. Yeah. So X Men maybe in a later phase four if that ever happens how would they tie that in would would they go right into a AVX type of thing or would they just let them do their own thing what do you think Secret Wars Secret Wars is a good thing to do but I I don't see that happening like a little you're like oh <laughs> no more no more Secret Wars toys damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Big question. If Marvel gets all these characters, do we see more reboots for X Men or Fantastic Four, or we just see them brought into the universe like they've been there before? I mean, they rebooted Spider Man again, might as well reboot everyone else and again. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, and yeah again. Like do it and do it better, yeah. yeah just maybe skip, like, like they did with, with, um, with Tom Holland, skip the origin part of it, go straight into he's Spider Man and let's, let's go with the story. Because yeah. people know. People know that guy has claws and he smells funny. People know that guy shoots lasers out of his eyes. Let's just go with it. Yeah, it seems to be that the um, the stumbling block for the Fantastic Four is the origin story. So skip it and just have them go yeah. after Doctor Doom. It's like, oh, here are these four guys, four guys and a gal, and uh, they're thing. going after what? And a thing. Okay. Uh, he's a guy. So, uh, <laughs> and then they go after Doctor Doom, you know, or have have Doctor Doom be plant him first. Have the like the new Avengers go after Doctor Doom. You know, because there is some crap going on. And I, I, I get the feeling that Phase 4 is going to be cosmic, but back back here on Earth, mm. yeah, um, we'll see that the Avengers had to go underground because the Sokovia Accords still in place. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be like the, the mutant registration was in uh, the X-Men for a lot of years. So they're going to have to be, the new Avengers are going to be on the fringes. They're going to be those outlaw underground heroes who fights for a world that fears and hates them. Any guesses on it, on any other movies? So it's three movies, three movies a year for three years. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that we see a standalone Falcon would be great. Yeah, there is the Eternals. Eternals that has been yeah, the Eternals, well, yeah. 
Um, that uh, that rocket movie, or uh, that rocket, uh, um, is that a standalone movie they're talking no, about? No, it's going to be Guardians, 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 yeah. Guardians 3. Yeah. They said it was going to be a lot darker than his uh, than the comic version, too. Wow. I think it's pretty yeah. dark in the movies already. Not, I mean, yeah. not like super dark, well, but I, I mean, it's... Gonna, it's going to explain it's all of it. Yeah. depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? Er- everyone he's cared about, like Thor, just got wiped out. Yeah. As it could be including the fourth, I guess, space, but uh, I guess for ages, people have been mad about the whole uh, thing like Netflix and the TV series were well, never included or combined with the other like few movies, actual movies. You know, like, like bringing like Coulson back and like Captain Marvel, but will be in like Netflix heroes. I guess for him, he had maybe a feature where oh, no, blending the two. Like having Daredevil pop up. Like the, the immortal Iron Fist helps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he punched a dragon in the heart. He right? could slap Don't Steven Spielberg. His... Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, no, with his iron, his glowing <laughs> fist. <laughs> the immortal Iron Fist. No, I mean, so they have they've had tie-ins in the Netflix from the Netflix perspective yeah, they, they, they where they talk, talk about, about like the attack on New York and they talk about Thor and they talk about the Hulk some in the Netflix series, but they never do any tie-in in in in, in the MCU proper movies so i yeah of course it'd be awesome I, I would love to see if the defenders came in to help save the day in infinity war 2 if they were keeping that under wraps and they just actually came in that would be amazing yeah um what uh, uh, power man power man's is they, one of the stronger the heroes he, he's probably captain america level strength and do the same thing everybody did in infinity gauntlet just just protect harlem that's all i want him to do in a movie yeah. Can't even do that without the Iron Fist. Not anymore. The Immortal Iron Fist. Um, yeah, you. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, you. Nothing I was wondering about the Phase Four was kind of taking a little bit at the end of Spider-Man: Homecoming. Are we going to see um, some sort of villains movie, Thunderbolts? So you know, at uh, the end of Spider-Man: Homecoming, I mean, when you see the Vulture, he's talking to Matt Gargan, who actually eventually becomes a Scorpion, and Matt Gargan goes. Hey, I got these guys that would really like to meet you, and they really like to do something about this guy, Spider-Man. So, do you think there would be some possibility down the line of a villain <coughs> would be like that in the MCU universe? Or? Like a Sinister like Six? Sinister Six, yeah. Yeah. That would be that would be cool. That would be movie cool. surrounding really them, cool. yeah. yeah. What I always hoped they were doing before they announced Phase Three is they would do like a Thanos Rising movie, yes. just. Yeah. But I mean, Infinity War ended up being a movie that was about Thanos and all the heroes trying to stop him. They were the antagonists yeah. in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it kind of was a, a Thanos origin, but I thought that would have been cool. Yeah, bringing in another villain. Um, a lot of times the villains are the most compelling and interesting characters. You know, yeah. he, Loki, people love Loki. <laughs> you know, he's, he's amazing. Um, Thanos. Mm, the Red Skull. I mean, people like. Yeah, I don't usually go for these Nazis, but this guy's kind of compelling. I do not support this statement. No, <laughs> uh, no, no. I was talking about this yesterday. Um, I was overhearing a bunch of kids outside. Uh, we were in the in the main ballroom, and someone asked, "Hey, so who's your favorite superhero? Who do you like the best in the movies?" A bunch of like nine and ten year olds, like Thanos. I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but they love them. Well, remember when we were kids? Like, who did you want to be? Did you want to be Luke Skywalker? No, you wanted to be uh, Darth Vader, Vader man. Yeah. or Yoda. I mean, you know, Yoda's cool because I mean, he's a Muppet. Who doesn't want to be a Muppet? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Vader. But everyone, Fett, yeah. Ba- Vader was. I mean, he's the man. And who is Vader? But Doctor Doom. So, and I, I've always, you know, it's like Reed Richards. Like I've conquered Doctor Doom for the fourth time. It's like <laughs> because I was doing my. Cartoon, it was Mr. Good. Fantastic Boy, um, as, as I do. He is and, not a voice actor, and I am not a voice <laughs> actor. And uh, I'm like, Doctor Doom would have kicked, and Doctor Doom would kick Reed Richards' ass if he didn't have like that big orange lump with him. So <laughs> true, true story. So yeah, the villains are the most compelling. You're absolutely right. They're, I know, we know they're gonna. They've said that it's the, the yeah, something they're doing is tying in. Yeah. 
So that means that they only have to pay half of their actors. Yeah. So <laughs> that frees up the budget for some yeah. you know, half nice of the, special Half effects. of the crew on the helicarrier is going to just disappear and the thing's going to crash. I think they should um, do it where every, every episode a different person's going to disappear and you know. And you're just waiting to see who's going to disappear that, that like episode. All in, it's <laughs> yeah. the entire season around one day, like 24. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Never been done before. I, yeah. I want to see it. So it's the same hour over and over. It's, it's like just, Kenny. You're yeah, waiting exactly. to see if Kenny die. You know what's going to happen. You just want to see how it's going to happen. You bastards. <laughs> like, oh, man, what about... Um, you guys want to be sad for a second? What about what, uh, what Groot says at the end? Oh, oh man. Uh, um, so for those of you who don't um, know, uh, James Gunn was asked if the, the very last words that, you know, when Groot said to Rocket, Groot said, you know, I am Groot, as he's right before he fades away. And someone asked James Gunn, hey, wh- what do you say? And he actually replied. And it was, uh, Dad, with a question mark. Why would you do that? Why would you do that on Father's Day? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. No, I'm on my drive home, Ming and I are going to like run into an abutment. It's like, Ming, I don't want to live anymore, and I don't want you to either. But no, this speaks to what I love about James Gunn and his approach to all of it, because he goes into, I think, more detail than anyone else uh, of the creators with in, everything in the background has a meaning, or, yeah. as, or at least is there for a joke that he, he talks about. It's... It, he has he's so detail oriented with everything in this. Not this literal back. And no, no I'm, I'm, I wasn't back. like looking like me. me looking this back. back. <laughs> James Gunn designed this. Uh, right. yes. I I think that um, he is he does it for himself. I think uh, first and foremost when he uh, did the uh, awesome mix volume one, that was for him. Yeah. You know while he was doing this and this was these were the 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 songs that were playing in his head, which I think is fantastic. If you're going to do something, do it for yourself first, and then everybody who knows you and and has your sensibilities will form around you. And I think that that's what, to me, that's the most telling thing about the Marvel Universe, is because you've got some amazing directors like the Russo brothers, and, I mean, every one of the movies that they directed was phenomenal. I mean, including and up to, you know, Avengers, Infinity War, but all the Captain Americas. And please realize, these are two guys who waited three seasons for one joke on Community. If you've never watched Community, they had, and they had um, one of the characters in each season say, Beetlejuice. And they waited three seasons, and they were on the cusp of getting canceled every season. And third time they said it, Beetlejuice walked right by. And it's like, wow, that's dedication right there. So it's a long, that's a long con right there. I'm telling you, that's they're playing the long game, and that's what I love about these guys. And they will do that, and they have that kind of sensibility. And I think that's what uh, distinguishes Marvel from DC. And this is, I, I don't want to, I mean, I've been, I think I talked this entire time. What, what, do, you you guys think, what do you think about, um, who's the director uh, uh, from Super Troopers coming in? A lot of the, the guys who've come in from uh, the community and Arrested Development, people who direct a lot of episodes, but the, the director from Super Troopers, where's my fact checker? Is it Jay? Jay, um, Sham, Chandra, Chandra, Ch- Chandra, 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 it's not going to work here anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, or them bringing in comedy, typically t- comedy directors in general, and taking over the franchise. If you can do a good comedy, you can do a good drama. Absolutely. So, I mean, if you can can direct someone somebody comedically, you know, um, what do they say? Comedy is easy, living, dying's hard. You know, that's yeah. that's pretty much what it is. Or actually, I think it's dying's easy, comedy's hard. Uh, if comedy is incredibly difficult to get across. And if you can do that, you can do anything. So, Speaking of comedies, I haven't heard you guys' thoughts about this. Did you think they went too far with Ragnarok, or did you like it? No, not at all. Loved I it. Thought, yeah, I, yeah. Thought I loved the comedy. Cool. I, um, Thor, uh, like, you know, growing up, I, I didn't read a lot of Thor. Just uh, his, it, the weird, his weird language and the way he talked, I couldn't, I could never... <laughs> English? Uh, <laughs> no, it was just like, you know, that, that thou with thy picketh up thy hammer. Like, I couldn't, and that, you know, they use that weird font. And as a kid, I just couldn't get past that. 
And you know, Thor, like I can't relate to Thor. I'm not I'll never be a god. I'll never look like Chris. And Hemsworth. don't you ever forget that. Right. And I won't. <laughs> oh, I, I was never, gonna tell him to keep trying. So I can never <laughs> yeah, I can never relate to don't Thor. Encourage him. But in Ragnarok, with all the comedy, he's like, well, he's a funny guy. I like That I can relate to, all the humor, and that just made it so much better for me. And when it went over into Infinity War, I think that was the best part. Even though, like, right at the beginning, it's like the direst stakes, and everyone around you is dying, and then you meet the Guardians of the Galaxy, and you can't help but be like... Well, and they, they, re, yeah. they rewrote that part because of what they were doing on Ragnarok, um, Chris Hemsworth called James Gunn and them and said, guys, we're, we're doing something special over here. We need to redo that Guardian scene. We need to re, re, rewrite it because mm. Thor's funny now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they actually changed it up because of what happened in Ragnarok. And I think that's, that's awesome how, you know, they're all feeding off of each other, they're all playing off of each other and just still building that universe, which is what MCU has done more amazing than I think any other film franchise in history. Easily. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, even more so than James Bond. Well, those are all separate <laughs> movies. <so. laughs> but yeah, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was great. More comedy, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, last thoughts. Uh, if you could have one magical wish for phase four. Uh, she Hulk. Whoa, Jen. Yeah, a lot of applause for that. I'm looking at Moon Knight. Ooh. Uh, Thank you, Calendar. Uh, it. It might happen, it might not, and it's a cliche as hell answer. But I'm such a huge X Men fan. I I, I want to oh. see him. I, I really do. That would that would be the dream come true for me. You know, reading comics since the '80s and it's just seeing that happen in MCU would be beautiful. I want to change my answer to X Men. No, <laughs> I would love to see Moon Knight. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm I'm on board with with X Men as well. It'd be great to see a a really good Phoenix Force. Uh, oh, Phoenix oh, yeah. done properly. Yeah, Dude, they, they, actually properly. Said, they said the new the new movie is getting actually good reviews. The new X Men, uh, Phoenix Rising, Phoenix. <laughs> yes, it, Phoenix Crazy. It's getting really great reviews from the guy who filmed it. So there was like four. No, I, there were four people that saw it in a trailer really? in in Europe, and okay. it, apparently it was really good. <laughs> okay. So three out of those four people, three point five percent of that been four people somehow yeah. got twenty thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any last things from you guys? Yeah. As if we were talking about the jokes in Infinity War, what do you think? I thought that. Guy that had the best one. Uh, was Drax. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I told the show. Yeah, yeah. it's hilarious. Uh, he he's one of the more surprising characters, like actor wise, going through. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, it's Dave Bautista. He, he's a funny guy. He has really good timing. It's that range, especially oh, yeah, yeah. If, if you figure a lot of people he's acting with aren't even there half the time. You know, Groot and Rocket. You know, there, there's a stand-in, sure, yeah. but it's not really them. Yeah, it's it's that that's difficult to do. As an actor, so that's really cool. Excellent. Anything else, guys? Thank you all thank so you. much. Thank, yeah. you. thank um, you so much. Yeah. Please. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. You can subscribe here to so subscribe to the channel. There's more videos off to the left. Mr. J says, don't forget to ring that bell button for more notifications.